More than five decades ago, Delano, California was the epicenter of one of the longest strikes in U.S. history. What started out as only a grape strike soon turned into a national civil rights movement. Under the guidance of activists like Cesar Chavez, Larry Itliong, and Dolores Huerta, along with thousands of farm workers, the Delano Grape Strike of 1965 sought to improve the working conditions for all farm laborers and set a model for the treatment of minorities in the workplace. The Grape Strike was wonderful because we got our first contracts. They got, they signed the contract in July of 1970. We had over 100,000 members. With the Great Boycott, it brought the growers to recognize the union. That was a start, first time in history. Delano, um, for the most part, people who were involved in the movement, it was like a little community. Uh, lived together, worked together, picketed together, uh, ate together, uh, and in some cases, you know, we just lived under the same roof. And um, all of all of what goes into uh, community life. The triumph took weeks, months, and years. The farm worker movement involved the unity of many groups that never before had come together for the same cause. It was a struggle that caused great controversy. You stink, you smell, you're a lousy bunch of commies, you're a rotten bunch of commie bums. Bunch of lousy commies, they don't want to, they don't want to carry the American flag. They want to carry the lousy red flag. Look at little Caesar, hey Caesar. You smell, I can smell your hair, I can smell you. I can smell your hair, you lousy commies. Viva la teamster. It was a strike that caused great suffering. Since he has been hospitalized, he has had communion brought to him daily, but he has not been able to go to Mass. But through trials and tribulations, the strike encouraged and inspired people to have faith in God. Catholicism played a major role in the spirituality of the movement. In the nombre de Padre, de Hijo, El Espíritu Santo. Amen. Por todos los cristianos, mexicanos, americanos, roguemos al Señor. Por los que luchan por las exigencias de la justicia, como César Chávez, ayúdanos con tu gracia para que podamos seguir su ejemplo y recibir su protección. Le rogamos al Señor. Amen. God help us to overcome. May justice be done. Through these acts of internal struggle, the goal of nonviolence was encouraged. The grape strike and the civil rights movement gained national and international attention. On the 19th day of the fast, Coretta King, widow of the great black leader, Martin Luther King, visits Caesar at Santa Rita, adding the solidarity and commitment of the civil rights movement to the farm workers' struggle in Arizona. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters in the cause. I'm deeply honored and privileged to be with you tonight and to be in the presence of your great and sainted leader, Caesar Chavez. Many people don't understand the commitment that nonviolence is a way of life, a way of living, a way of believing and acting and doing. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. After five years of constant picketing and boycotting, the strike came to an end.
But this historical movement faces another major problem today. It is being forgotten by the people living in the same place that saw the birth of the grape strike. It has become just a faint memory. A lot of local people just don't are aware that there's a public history uh, that's accessible for them. And there's a whole host of reasons. It could just be that we don't have a culture of, um, of historical appreciation here in the valley. With a population of more than 50,000 people, Delano, California continues to be a powerhouse of agricultural production. It continues to be a farm working community. The grape strike of 1965 resulted in a major victory for many farm workers because it helped establish basic human rights for them. Two of the sites that saw the farm worker movement's growth and contributions are the 40 Acres and Agbayani Village. The 40 Acres was the headquarters of the United Farm Workers Union and the place where Cesar Chavez fasted for 25 days during the strike. Agbayani Village was a retirement home for Filipino farm workers who immigrated from the Philippines and started the grape strike. Filipino workers could not marry outside of their race due to discriminatory laws in California at that time, forcing them to remain unmarried and alone. In the present time, both historical sites are still located in Delano. Unfortunately, they are not frequently visited. An anonymous questionnaire was given to 60 voluntary adult participants in the Delano and Kern County communities, assessing the knowledge and interest that locals have about the 1965 Delano grape strike. The 60 surveys were distributed in three locations. The Bakersfield College Delano campus, California State University Bakersfield, and the Delano Adult School. The data derived from the survey not only demonstrates the lack of visitors, but also the lack of knowledge on the existence of both locations. The first research question was, have you ever visited the 40 acres located in Delano, California? With the following answer options. The majority of the participants answered option C, never, but I would like to. The second highest rated answer was option B, yes, only once, followed by option A, yes, more than once. A few selected option E, never, I don't know what that is, and no one chose option D, never, I'm not interested. This data illustrates evidence of the interest of the 40 acres as a historical landmark. The same question was asked regarding Agbayani village. The data varied significantly. More than half of the participants selected option C, never, but I would like to. The second highest rated answer was option E. Never, I don't know what that is, selected by 22 of the 60 participants. Then followed option D, never, I'm not interested, with two votes, and only one person out of the 60 has been to Agbayani village more than once, which means the majority of the people have never been to this historical location as demonstrated by option B. This data demonstrates the lack of knowledge from most Delano and Kern County community members on the importance and existence of this historical site. A lot of local people are just unaware of the various uh, historical sites in Kern County that are associated with the farm labor movement. Whether you're talking about the farm labor movement of the 1930s with the um, uh, Steinbeck camp in South Kern, or whether you're talking about La Paz and Tehachapi, or uh, 40 acres in Delano. However, the Cesar E. Chavez National Monument, located in Keene, California, an area a little more than 60 miles to the southeast of Delano, is visited more frequently than Agbayani Village, which is located within the 40 acres. As with the other two locations, the same research question was asked about this historical site. Have you ever visited the Cesar E. Chavez National Monument located in King, California? The results show that 70% of all the participants selected option C. Never, but I would like to. 
followed by the next highest rated answer, option E, never, I don't know what that is. Closely behind is option B, yes, only once. Next is option A, yes, more than once. And no one selected option D, never, I'm not interested. It's important to note this aspect as it demonstrates a unanimous interest in the area which is farther away from Delano than Agbayani village. If Delano is home to such historically and culturally rich sites, why do they lack attention? On the one hand, Delano lacks institutional resources, but it has this great cultural legacy. And so bridging those worlds is really, really important. Um, I've been particularly impressed with the Filipino-American National Historical Society, which is a uh, a nationwide group that does have a chapter in Delano and they have been very well organized in going after grants and aligning themselves with statewide efforts um, to preserve the history of Filipino Americans and so for the Delano Grape Strike the Filipino contributions to the Delano Grape Strike they initiated it before um, the National Farm Workers Association uh, Larry Itliang, the great Filipino labor leader was co-founder of the United Farm Workers uh, the, the Filipino American Historical Society has been on the forefront, in my mind, of trying to get the, the public in the Delano community to, to know the importance of that history. The hall was our central point. The Filipino had a big role, and I don't want that to be forgotten. Filipinos of the Delano community have been proactive to inform locals of their contributions during the strike by organizing bus tours to several historical sites and bringing keynote speakers and authors, they aim to educate and attract local and outside attention to Delano's rich history. Similarly, the United Farm Workers Union aims to attract attention to Delano's historical sites through other means. According to a source of the UFW, the Cesar Chavez Foundation is working on developing a 10-year plan that aims to make sites like the 40 Acres and Agbayani Village more visitor-friendly places. But for former UFW members, the progress seems almost non-existent. The moment Caesar died, the mission and the goal of information, information empowering people died. Our mission was La Información es Poder. We would open our radio station with the farm workers' prayer, and we would close it with the farm workers' prayer. The idea was to empower the workers and educate them and make them strong. And everybody that wants to listen to it, not necessarily farm workers, just everybody, giving out good information for them, not to be afraid. Why aren't they out in the fields talking to workers? Why aren't they getting their opinion? Radio Campesina could be doing much more than what they're doing. Cesar Chavez's former secretary, Kathy Murguia, believes that the current leaders need to reflect back on the original mission of the movement. His heart was really with the poor and how to organize, how to get them organized, to stand up, to have a voice. And I, I think that all kind of disappeared in the, 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 in the 70s, the 80s, uh, the 90s. And today, the union, I think, is struggling to kind of, you know, find itself. And I think the only way they can really find themselves is going back to those basic things. There are people that were a part of the movement who are now in positions of power. Um, you know, I don't know how much they reflect back to the history um, and I, I think that age group that kind of went through the, that struggle is, is kind of, they're all drifting away, but it's their kids. Both the Filipino Americans and the Mexican Americans seem to be working separately to continue the progress of the farm worker movement. But as history shows, the only way for success is through unity. I think finding common ground has, is one of the legacies of the United Farm Workers. I mean, the, the term United Farm Workers means you know, united. It was the, the merger of two labor unions, the Filipinos and the Mexicans primarily. Um, and the UFW, uh, in their origins, had a diverse labor board, uh, Jewish Americans, African Americans, um, white Americans. Um, that was what made the UFW so special, is that it had common ground among uh, the, the different groups who participated in the farm worker movement. 
Mr. Arnold Morrison is a retired music teacher in Delano. He has been very involved in community events and was able to tape the 50th anniversary of the Grape Strike in 2015. Because I did tape the 50th anniversary of the Grape Strike, um, I absorbed a lot of information there that I didn't know was out there before. It was interesting to see the people that came, and it was really interesting for me to see how many people were not aware of what Philip Veracruz and what Larry Ileong did for the Grape Strike. They've all heard of Cesar Chavez because that's the name you hear when you're out there in the field and when you're out there on the news, but um, people that really dug deeper and did a little bit of research uh, found out that it wasn't just him. He was a major part of it, but it would not have been successful without the other two. I'd like to take it all the way back to Star Trek, back in the 60s when Captain Kirk said uh, the prejudices people feel about each other disappear when they get to know each other. And hearing these people talk from the heart, it really gives you an understanding of what they came from, where they're going. And I was really, I just fell in love with this community because yes, there is division, don't get me wrong, you know, it's not all kumbaya. And I know that even back in those days, um, even to this day, there are some people that have some real bitter feelings about the strike. Um, but I think most of that is starting to fade away and people are really starting to understand uh, why it was necessary. And if we don't teach our children now about the importance of not only education, but of standing up for what you believe in, okay, we don't want to see oppression like we saw back then. And hopefully that will never happen again. Today, um, I think there's some fragmentation, um, but I think the fragmentation is normalized. I mean, racial segregation, ethnic segregation, urban-rural divides, those are very pronounced here in the San Joaquin Valley. And so, I think there's a great opportunity to find common ground within a region that is separated uh, by a whole host of reasons. And so I would hope that um, all of these different groups that you mentioned from the UFW, the Cesar Chavez Foundation, the Dolores Huerta Foundation, the Filipinos, uh, that, they, that they do find common ground on remembering that legacy. But finding common ground among the organizations that led and continue to lead the farm worker movement is only part of the solution to preserving the legacy of the grape strike. That education begins at home with the information shared within their own families. I think anecdotally a lot of students have heard the name Cesar Chavez. We have Cesar Chavez High School in Delano. We have Robert Kennedy High School in Delano. Uh, students have heard the name before, but it's very seldom that students have a deep knowledge of that history even if it's within their families. So uh, a lot of the, the older family members don't necessarily talk about um, that era with their children or their grandchildren for a whole host of reasons. Um, one reason might be, of course, that uh, their families oppose the union. Uh, there's other um, cases where students, uh, their, their family members don't feel that the, the true history of the union and that movement has been told and so they have knowledge that would challenge a master narrative. Um, but for a whole host of reasons, generally, most students are unaware of that deeper history. They, they know the name, they know, they, they know Cesar Chavez is important, but um, they don't necessarily know deeply anything about that history. Education goes far beyond just students' homes and transcends into the classrooms. The current curriculums for the K-12 education system in Delano do not focus on teaching about the grape strike. But the data derived from the survey demonstrates an almost unanimous approval of the inclusion of this topic in their local districts. They have the high school. I mean, that's, I, I, I don't know if, how many in the high school know that much about the early days of the movement. Indeed, Delano has Cesar E. Chavez High School, named after Cesar Chavez, which opened in 2003. Five years later, Robert F. Kennedy High School named after the late U.S. Attorney General, New York Senator and Presidential Candidate Robert F. Kennedy opened in 2008 to commemorate and acknowledge his support to the farm workers and minorities during the grape strike. The result has been that the farm workers have suffered and have suffered and uh, grown much more slowly economically than any other segment of our society. It's terribly unfair and very unreasonable and uh, very, very unjust and these people have suffered tremendously. A couple of high school teachers from these Delano schools were contacted for information on whether they or their schools taught about the Grape Strike's historical heritage, 
but they declined to give a statement on camera. However, they mentioned that as teachers, they are required by law to follow the curriculum built around the standardized testing known as Common Core State Standards from kindergarten through 12th grade. These standards are decided by the State Board of Education and taught all across California and in more than 40 other states. In comparison to other civil rights movements, the grape strike isn't included in the curriculum and local students discuss the impact this has had in their classrooms. I come from Cesar Chavez, so it's very ironic actually that I don't know much about it. We actually don't take time to learn about this. The time I did hear about it was uh, uh, Cesar Chavez Day of Service from ASB. They only sent a couple of students to Keene and we just learned a little bit about it, but it was just the basics. They never actually took the time in our classes to let us know about the strikes or the working conditions of these farm workers. No, I never did learn about the grape strike. Um, it was never taught in school. It was never brought up. So this is, uh, this is the first time I'm actually, you know, experiencing this. En la preparatoria no aprendí mucho. Es un tema que no se toca demasiado. Y para mí es importante que el tema de la huelga era, es un tema que se tiene que conocer y, tiene, y, y no solo los mexicanos, sino que todas las personas tienen que identificar y tienen que saber la importancia que, que fue una huelga. Presently, there is work in progress geared towards educating Delano teachers on the importance of including local history and students' learning objectives. On March 1st of 2019, CSU Bakersfield's professor, Dr. Adam Sawyer, and Bakersfield College professor, Dr. Oliver Rosales, hosted a pedagogy training at the Bakersfield College Delano campus. I would like everybody to go write a response to each question. What brings you here today? How should the students' lives, all right, the students we're serving, how should that be incorporated into the curriculum? How should this amazing local geographic context be brought into the curriculum? I think when teachers are able to utilize place and family in the curriculum, it has a greater impact on student outcomes and student learning and better teaching. And so rural communities, especially from McFarland and Wasco and Arvin and Delano, are very much ripe for um, a place-based pedagogy and culturally responsive curriculum. And so both he and I are interested in um, training opportunities and grant writing opportunities that focus on building that capacity among the secondary level from kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, and so I think the farm layer, farm layer movement, the, the Delano grape strike, is a great historical topic that um, touches a lot of different disciplines from, of course, history, but also literature and um, environmental studies. Um, and I think the idea is to try to create some common ground between the K through 12 education system, uh, community colleges, and uh, the university, like to getting all the teachers on board with how to utilize this wonderful cultural and historical legacy in the classroom for the benefit of students. When you're dealing with students of any level, right, who am I, right? Uh, what is the story of my family and my community? And then finally, what can I do to make positive change and bring social justice to my community and the world? And so no matter what level you're at, if you're at Harvard or you're at the Delano Joint Union uh, Elementary District, those kinds of questions can guide the work that you do uh, across disciplines. Students in Delano are very culturally homogenous, uh, whether or not they are um, Mexican Americans, Mexican immigrants, Filipinos, um, all of the rural students do have strong commonalities compared to the main campus. So the way I approach teaching California history and farm labor history and civil rights history in Delano is different from how I do it in Bakersfield. Um, I'm not able to do some of the culturally responsive assignments in, uh, the, in Bakersfield that I'm able to do in Delano. And the knowledge that, that the students produce in Delano is different. And what I mean by that is uh, the oral histories that I have students do with their family members produce um, information that, that fills an archival gap. So um, a lot of studies on the United Farm Workers and the Farm Labor Movement focus on leadership uh, within the union as opposed to the, how the grassroots experienced the 1960s and 1970s, which was the heyday of the Farm Labor Movement. 
And so students have access to those stories, and you can't find that necessarily in an archival record. And so I couldn't do that kind of assignment necessarily in, in Bakersfield because the students don't have those strong, strong connections to um, the agricultural industry. So that makes uh, Delano very unique in that, in that regard. What I see as a historian is that that militancy, that position that they have as artists today, it's remembering the legacy of occupation. The various sources that are coming at you in terms of how you access this history. As a professor and as a teacher, I try to embed those public learning opportunities in my curriculum where students are given the option to do assignments that get them out of the classroom and that get them in the field, so to speak. I think it's very important for teachers to um, learn more about their local history and local culture and resources that are available to them. Uh, and schools and colleges and universities can be that bridge. Dr. Rosales actively seeks out ways to get his students involved in extracurricular activities and extra credit opportunities with events such as the book tour launch of the very first children's book on the life of Larry Itliong, held in Delano on February of 2019. Larry Itliong was a Filipino-American labor organizer and leader of the Agricultural Workers Organization Committee, who started the Delano Grape Strike of 1965. The three-day tour was aimed towards educating the local community of Larry Itliong's participation and efforts during the grape strike, and many of his students participated. To be honest with you, it was something different, and I enjoyed it. Um, I got, a, got to see perspectives from so many different people and basically, um, you know, a little bit of their heritage and a little bit of where Delano, you know, grew up um, or was basically, you know, formed and how it was formed and the, the hard work that went into it. So I learned a lot from it. I know that they were activists for, for human rights, whether it be for the, for the Mexicans or for the Filipinos, you know, that, that they were activists and they were, they were fighting for their rights and for um, their fellow countrymen. I'd definitely be open to uh, going on a tour and learning about the Grape Shack more. The granddaughter of Larry Itliong attended the event and talks about her role in preserving the Grape Strike's legacy as a first grade teacher and Delano community member. I'm really excited about my grandfather's book written by Don and Gail. I feel like they did a great job of telling his story and so I'm excited to just share that with my family and in my classroom. As a teacher, we are required to stick with a certain curriculum and unfortunately in the past, um, some parts of history have not been included in that curriculum. And I feel that's because it's not geared towards a bigger picture, which is like standard testing and things like that. So Gail, which is the author of the book, sent some curriculum to our school district and now we're able to incorporate it a lot more. And there's different variations from elementary all the way to high school that we can incorporate. At CSU Bakersfield, Spanish professor and department chair, Dr. Dustin Nepp is doing his part to promote more inclusion of local history. He offers a course called The Chicano Experience, which, among other things, focuses on how the 1965 Delano Grape Strike helped develop a sense of pride and identity among the farm workers during that time and reflects on Delano's progress today. Si tenemos una escuela, un Cesar Chavez High School, ahí en Delano, porque nos enseña de él mismo. Porque los que están a cargo de la educación no se le ha dado valor a algo que fue histórico y que en este caso en Delano yo digo que Ellos deberían de ser como los interesados en conocer su historia, pero pues si no hay alguien que formule eso, pues daría lo mismo. No trabajas en el campo, no eres parte de, no soy parte de la unión, entonces ¿por qué voy a fomentar ese conocimiento que ni siquiera sé o me lo han inculcado? Esta clase de Dr. Neb es muy importante porque en sí los estudiantes que estamos en esa clase no tenemos mucho conocimiento sobre lo que pasó. Así que debería de ser un paso para, para promover más, eh, más iniciativa, para, para empezar a educar a nuestros estudiantes de preparatoria, no solo de preparatoria, sino también de todos tipos de, de, de edades. Es importante para que crea el pueblo, ver que un, que un líder es como tú, que viene desde abajo y lucha por, está luchando por los mismos derechos que todos. Yo no sé algo, dar voz. Sí. 
al pueblo y como ya hemos contado, ¿verdad? no simplemente al pueblo masculino, sí. sino también al pueblo. The Coachella growers quickly gave in to the Filipinos' demand for a dollar and forty cents an hour. Now the workers set their sights on the grape harvest to the north, near the town of Delano. Our local institutions, BC and CSUB, um, there, there, are, there are faculty there who have tried uh, to help uh, meld those two worlds, like the outside and inside, if you will. And that, that, that's just part of Kern County culture, though. A lot, of, a lot of people here in Kern County are very insular looking, inward looking, and uh, the outside world does recognize the importance of Kern County and the farm labor movement, uh, but the local people don't always, don't always do that. And part of it is a failure of curriculum. I think, I think that's important to note, that you have to start from a young age and getting the young, young kids to be aware of this history, and it's just in their backyard. If we were living on the East Coast, <laughs> you know, if we were living in Virginia or uh, uh, Boston, it's very easy for young people on the East Coast to see history in their backyard. It's not so easy for children in Delano and Kern County to see history in their backyard. To increase the local historical visibility, the BC Delano campus and CSU Bakersfield are working towards locating and preserving the resources that will allow the instruction of this topic for future generations and its presence within the community. The National Endowment for the Humanities funded uh, Digital Delano Preserving International Community's History from approximately 2016 to 2018. And over the course of a couple of years, um, the Bakersfield College Library uh, in Delano, uh, working in partnership with community organizations, hosted a number of public events. And they were designed to get um, the community to digitize some of their archival materials that they have within families, uh, whether it was um, letters or uh, family photographs, uh, identification cards, immigration-related material, old newspaper clippings, um, and we were able to accumulate a good amount of material from um, the rural population, whether it was Filipino communities, uh, Mexican communities, um, we're mo now moving into Yemeni materials, um, and that material has been digitized and is housed at the Delano campus. Um, it's not fully available online, uh, it's a very expensive process to do, um, but we're in talks with CSU Bakersfield, uh, as well as our Bakersfield College archive, about how to better preserve that. But the grant money right now was designed mostly to just digitize the material before it's lost to the historical record. I think we've built a really good archive. It is small, but growing, and uh, I think it's very important for students to understand the history of the community. And this is a international community with history going back to the late 1800s and we received some of the materials from when Delaney was just getting started. So I think that is very interesting to see the different stages and different periods. Students can bring in histories. It's more of an open call for stories related to our international community rather than um, assignments that have been focused specifically on the farm worker movement. But by having that open call, we've also received some materials that are um, related to the farm worker movement, but it's not necessarily only students. It's open to community members as well. Similarly, CSU Bakersfield continues to grow its online archive on social justice issues. And in partnership with Bakersfield College, it aims to gather more information regarding movements like that of the grape strike. Besides the online archive, CSUB houses other documents and collections pertaining to the grape strike. The main collection is uh, the Randall Beeman uh, Farm Labor Archives. That uh, collection was, was uh, collected and assembled by Dr. Uh, Randall Beeman, who was a uh, professor over at Bakersfield uh, College, a history professor. He approached us in 2015 uh, during the, the, you know, the anniversary year uh, just to see if we were interested in acquiring that collection and we jumped on the opportunity right away because it's, it's such a, a rich uh, collection um, of photographs and documents and videos, um, books um, that show a variety of aspects of the 65 uh, grape strike and even beyond that as well. CSUB's Historical Research Center has been the stage for a series of events to exhibit social justice movements like that of the Delino Grape Strike. The most recent was in 2015.
The exhibit ran uh, from August of 2015 through uh, uh, December of that same year. We had a variety of uh, people who um, visited the exhibit. Uh, one thing I should say about the exhibit is that all of our exhibits, and, and especially that one, was uh, research designed, constructed, written, and installed by our CSUB students. On the, uh, the opening night, we had um, a contingent from the UFW um, and local um, the lo local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce uh, that um, visited the exhibit. We even had the mayor of Cerritos uh, uh, come and, and see uh, the exhibit. In the future, um, we plan to do another exhibit uh, which would um, kind of entail the whole social justice movement here in, in, in Kern County and uh, you know the, the 65 grape strike uh, and subsequent strikes would be uh, a part of that exhibit. Back in Delano, despite there being a lack of resources to fund projects that help to commemorate the grape strike's legacy, the data derived from the survey indicates that there is a strong desire to preserve it. Participants were asked about their interest in the preservation of the grape strike's legacy with the following question. Are you interested in preserving the legacy left by the grape strike within Delano? The results show that about 77% of them responded yes, while an 18% were unsure and less than 1% answered no or I don't care. The pronounced interest of the people will be pivotal to the resources allocated to the city of Delano for this purpose. Um, the National Park System is very interested in expanding resources in the Delano area. Uh, the Cesar Chavez Special Study Report, which was completed a few years ago, um, has been submitted to the federal government to recognize historical sites uh, all across California, but many of them in Delano that are associated with the farm worker movement. So it's very important that local people know that history, but it's matching um, that, that place uh, with resources, and that's the challenge that parents and schools and educators uh, face. Um, rural communities have a lot of challenges, but at the same time, they have this incredible cultural legacy that we need to, to marshal. No existe en sí un día conmemorativo en el que se celebre, que sea día festivo para todos los de Deleno, en donde vayamos a conmemorar ese día y esa lucha que fue tan importante para todos los para todos los, los latinos y los trabajadores agrícolas en sí. Hay una preparatoria de César Chávez, hay diferentes murales, pero es todo lo que hay. No existe una exhibición eh, que nos muestre un poquito de toda esa historia. I do think that it's very important, not only because that's the place where all of this took place, but because most of our grandparents or even family members are field workers, so this impacted us. There's a lot of history in Delano that many people don't know about. Not a lot of tourists, let's say, come over, and I feel like that would be an important part. There's no like statues of Cesar Chavez or you know, something that commemorates everything that occurred, the sacrifices that people made to get where they were at. So I feel like that would be very nice to have. Today, more than ever, Children of field workers and field workers themselves are becoming more educated on their local history and more proactive in social justice movements. With the help of local educational and governmental institutions, with the unity of different farm worker organizations, through honest communications within families, and through the visibility of these historical sites, the Delano Grape Strike of 1965 will serve as an example of possible changes. The combination of these elements can help to inspire the newer generations that may one day become the teachers, leaders, and advocates of their own local history. As a teacher, I plan on incorporating all of our culture's history the best that I can because I know how it's impacted me and I like that for my students and for my family, my future family. It's part of like our identity, you know, we come from immigrants, parents of, that migrated to the United States. So I feel like this is practically about a better future, you know, the, living the American dream. That's what it is for me. And I would want to inspire other people to push forward. And in the huelga, that's what they did they bettered the lives of those that were working under those conditions. So I would want to do the same, but in the lives of other people, um, maybe to further their education. Los trabajadores agrícolas en sí son el corazón de, 
de los Estados Unidos, son una parte muy importante de, de, de quien trae la comida a las mesas de, de las personas. Former UFW members desire not just for the legacy to be preserved within Delano, but for the work within the movement to continue and for the current members and leaders to reflect on the struggle's origins. Learn your history. Learn who you are and, and be re respect yourself for who you are. Um, because a lot of people don't respect farm workers <laughs> very much. And, you know, they're, they're kind of disposable. And that's tragic. And, you know, the, the, the dignity of being a farm worker, I think it's important to, for that to return. To me, it's what happened in Delano is a model of what is possible today. Um, and I think what's lacking or what I don't see are the kinds of leaders that can inspire and are so dedicated and willing to make the kinds of sacrifices that Caesar made. I don't see it, I don't think I'm going to live to see it the way we talked about it. It's not, um, I actually thought we were going to be so much better off and, and we're not. We're not. Grassroot organizing, going back to it, getting people that shield it from the heart, getting, getting people to care. Inevitably, one day, all of those who are part of the strike will be gone, and with them, their efforts and their memories. The only way to ensure that this doesn't happen is for the new generations to reconnect with the past. So the legacy is not just a faint memory, but a reflection of what has been overcome and a mirror of positive changes for a prosperous present and future. It's very important for us to know our history because Growing up, I didn't really have that, and now that I know it, I'm proud of it, and I'm so excited to share our history with other people so that our youth is aware of what took place a long time ago and so that we're prideful of where we came from. People are talking about them. People are talking about their past. And by people, I mean people who are at major universities, research scholars, documentary filmmakers, and that's wonderful. But I think it's important that uh, young people um, in rural California and in Delano know their history and they can tell their own stories. For young people especially, you're the living legacy of your ancestors and what happens to you matters and in some ways you are your ancestors' wildest dreams and it's important that you shape that narrative and tell that story.